a fungus mat. <laughs> Just what we do here. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, um, I am going to be doing another one of those videos that I did a couple weeks ago. I think I called it like life as a plant parent. Um, this is the thumbnail of it if you wanted to watch. I'll also link it in the description. It seems like you guys enjoyed that one. I did kind of mention in that, no, I didn't kind of mention, I did mention in that video that on days like that where I just kind of spend the whole day with my plants, it's my form of relaxation, self-care. It's sacred to me, it's very sacred to me. I work a lot all week so that I can have the one day where I don't have to be behind a computer and I can just like be with my plants and clean around the house and do all those things. And while I'm doing that, I catch up on podcasts, I catch up on TV shows, movies and stuff. And I don't know, it's just, those are the days that I really, really look forward to. And so I try to not film on those days because then this would be me working. Um, but I figure since I do it like at least three or four times a month, I can take you along at least one of the times and just show you what these days look like. They always look a little bit different. Sometimes they're a lot of the same things, but um, we do have kind of a few different things to do today that isn't normally on the roster. So I'm just gonna just take you through it as I go. With that said, I think once Archie is born and maybe even starting in May, I'm probably not gonna be able to film week ofs very often. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe April is the last week of until maybe like the end of summer slash fall but i think in replacement of those long videos i'll just film one of these and try to make it as long as the week ofs are but it's more of just like a day of plant things but yeah that's just just a disclaimer and i also probably might be going down to one video a week i do plan on taking a, a very short maternity leave a lot of people might judge me for this but i think i only want to take about a month off and after a month i want to just get right back into my schedule but i might be down to one video a week in the beginning and then i'll go back up to two once we sort of settle into our lives with the new addition so anyway blabbing as usual the first thing that i want to do today is make mosquito bit water so that it has a little bit of time to soak before it's actually time to water these plants so if you guys don't know what mosquito bits are they are these i picked this up while i was in the states here in canada you can only find the dunks they're like little donut looking things and i don't really like those in terms of performance i feel like it doesn't saturate the water as good as these do so they just look like little like popcorn kernels i'm going to show you how i dilute it in water and it is made for mosquitoes but it also um, works with fungus gnats and i've done about two treatments now and i've just noticed that it's gotten so much better i'm fine i probably have maybe 20 percent of the fungus gnats that I used to have, which to me is a win. So I'm gonna be doing another um, treatment today since the plants here need water. Uh, so I'm gonna take you over to the kitchen and show you how I get it prepared. I've got my bucket here and this is a 13 liter bucket. And what I'm gonna do is I have this mesh bag here and what I'm aiming to do is making a concentrate, meaning I'm gonna make it a little stronger than I guess what is normally recommended because then I will be using in my watering cup half of this and just half water. So um, this is the last of my last mosquito bit batch. So I'm just gonna be using the rest of this and I'm gonna pour it into this mesh bag. And I wanna at least fill the entire bag. So I'm gonna open this. So I'm gonna fill it pretty much all the way. Close it up. it twice so that the mosquito bits don't come out and then I'm just gonna throw it in here and use some warm water and fill this bucket
the lighting in here is horrific. I can never get it right. But anyway, while um, I'm waiting for my mosquito bit water to be ready, I want to do a spider mite spray in here. This is my spider mite magnet EXO. Um, this one, I feel like one of them always has spider mites. Um, I don't see any visible ones right now, but it doesn't mean they're not there. So I've been trying to be better about just doing sprays every week. So what I've done is did my spider mite mixture, which I will throw up here. I've just put that into my sprayer and I'm just going to bring them all to the bath. I'm going to give them a nice big spray down and hopefully remove any spider mites that might be lingering. Um, I wanted to do this right away before watering because I want them to be able to dry off so that at the very end I can bring them back into the XO and get it restyled. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to start plucking each of them one by one, taking them to my shower and we'll get them washed down.
Oh my gosh. That was, that's normally a very exhausting task, but it's like 10 times more exhausting doing it pregnant. So I am going to start watering here now. I was initially going to just do like a time-lapse watering, but I think I'll do what I did in another video where I just kind of show you highlights of different plants since um, things have happened since I've been away and I've got some cool growth to show you, some not cool growth to show you. But first I wanna show you my new watering can. I stole this from my mother. <laughs> so uh, I, I had every intention of buying my own. I saw this at my mom's house. Product showcase is off. Okay, so I saw this at my mom's house and I was like, I don't even really enjoy this style of watering can because I feel like I'm so bad at aiming. I have been getting better at it, but this just, I don't know, the style of it, it just tickled me so badly. So I went to go order it on Amazon and they were out of this color. They do have two other colors, which I will link in the description if you are interested or you can just keep an eye on it and see if this color comes back. I think there might be another listing where you can get an individual one because um, I think the one she got was like a pack of two. It's a little bit more expensive if you want this color, but I was like, even if I don't use this, I would just have it on display because it's so cute. So anyway, I'm not gonna be using this today, but I just wanted to show it to you. So let me go get my mosquito dunk water. One more thing. Can you help me really quick? Sure. Can you just carry that very heavy bucket and put it on here, please? I need to turn this. I have PTSD from that bucket. It doesn't, no, it doesn't stink. stink. It doesn't stink. I'll tell you guys a story in a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. No, look, smell it. Thank you, sir. For your kindness. Oh my gosh, the air conditioning feels so good. So, um, oh gosh, I don't want my drink to spill. So what I'm doing is I have my uh, watering jug that needs to be replaced desperately. It's getting so grimy but I've just filled about half of it with water, a little bit more than half with just regular water. And then I'm going to be adding the rest. I'm going to fill the rest with my dunk water. If I let this mosquito dunk water brew overnight, I'd probably do like a quarter of the dunk water and the three quarters water. But since it's only been brewing for probably half an hour. Um, I wanna do a little bit more. I got my little bin here cause I know I'm probably gonna be chopping things today in terms of stuff that's pissing me off. Like this dang <laughs> Oya Clemenciorum. This, not allowed in my house anymore. We don't do that here anymore. So I'm gonna just chop here. and hopefully it doesn't bleed too much. Um, anyway, so the reason that Vince, when I asked him to go get my mosquito dunk water, am I too far? Can you guys see anything? I'm gonna move you down. Ow, belly's in the way. So um, yeah, the reason that Vince <laughs> said he has PTSD from the mosquito dunk water is because while I was in California, he was on plant daddy duty and I had him do a um, mosquito dunk watering while I was away. I made the mosquito dunk water maybe two days before I left and he wasn't watering until the following week. And I didn't really think about the fact that the water would be stagnant and would probably get like really yucky and stuff. And so when he like opened up the batch of mosquito dunk water, he was like, that is <laughs> the worst thing I've ever smelled. And so he just assumed that it was like the, the dunks or the bits, I keep saying dunks, um, it was the bits that made it stink. And I'm like, no, it's not the bits. It's just the fact that it's like still water and it's it's warm this week. And yeah, he was, he was traumatized. But I feel like some of you guys know the smell I'm talking about. You know, if you like, let pond rot and just like that water is just festering there or even like propagation water that doesn't um or that gets really like mildewy and like algae ridden 
it's that nasty mucky yucky smell it's it's hard to describe if you know you know <laughs> And if you don't consider yourself lucky. So I watered a week ago. I watered literally exactly a week ago. Did I water this just right now? Why is there so much water in here? I might have actually watered this a few days ago. Maybe I did like a pass by and saw that it was dry, but some of these are still not super, super dry because it hasn't been like really warm this week, but I'm still gonna give them a little top up so that I don't have to even think about it. I don't want to have to um, go back and water. Look at my really sad penis cactus that I <laughs> beheaded the tip of. I'm hoping that I can get some new growth on it and that it like actually looks somewhat normal. I don't know why, something tells me that this one is next in line for tanking. I don't know why, it's just this like sense that I get, like something, it's gonna do the same thing that my Hoya Callistophila did, my Hoya New Guinea Ghost. I keep getting comments telling me to stop growing my Hoyas in pond. I feel like people are either really, really good and successful at growing Hoyas at, in pond, or they're just not. And so I'm kind of contemplating, like as my Hoya collection has dwindled down, I'm almost contemplating moving them all to soil I don't know. Tell me, what are you guys growing your Hoyas in? I want to know what everybody is. What's 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 the what's the 411? My Sinengia leucotrica came back to life. I'm just really sad that I missed the bloom. Oh, and this one died at the bottom. Why? Poor BB. Little baby died. But this one's doing okay, seemingly. This one, I, I'm not very successful at growing more than one shoot at a time. It seems like it's just like one and done. But yeah, I missed the, the little flower while I was in California. My husband, when we were FaceTiming, he showed it to me and I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I was there. I wanted to take a picture of it, but that's okay. And then my Hoya Erythrina, I've been getting comments about this. And um, yeah, I feel, I definitely am loving this as much as some of you Hoya people out there. And it's getting really close to the grow light now, my Barinas, and it's starting to sun stress it a bit. Like look at how purple those leaves are compared to the green down here. Well, actually, oh yeah, the green ones down here. I'm not sure if I like it more sun stress or less sun stress like i guess the purple around the leaf margin is pretty cool like this is a good example of it the the contrast is really really nice but at the same time i also enjoy just these green leaves so i don't know maybe half and half wouldn't be bad but this is not this is not okay I'm cutting again. Actually, there have been people saying that they want this plant and I'm contemplating propagating it, but at the same time, I am loving like how big it's getting, but maybe I can afford because like this one doesn't have a little cluster. So maybe I chop down here and we can spread the erythrina love. Hopefully I can get these rooted soon. I don't like selling unrooted Hoya props because, I don't know, I feel like it's a hit or miss in terms of rooting them. I think I'm just gonna leave, I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm not gonna cut it into two and uh, I'll just sell one of them. Otherwise, she's doing okay. I do think that she's probably gonna need a repot soon because it's in the world's tiniest little thing. Also, that reminded me of this comment that I got down here a couple weeks ago. People are so freaking strange. The things that they get hung up on. Gendering your plants is wild. Do you know what else happens in the world? You must be shocked when you see the news every day if you think that's wild. Ow, I just poked the crap out of myself. Please don't break to tame this thing without having to go grab another clip but i think i'm gonna need to now i want to like clip it right here 
<sighs> if I wasn't pregnant, it would be fine because it's fine. It's just my OCD. Like I know that it's gonna nag me, but it's fine. Murtillo cactus is uh, getting bigger. You can see the color difference in the new growth. It's just extremely, extremely tiny. I don't know how to make her boobs bigger. I never had luck in that department until I got pregnant anyway, but these are rentals. I can't keep them, unfortunately. It's so hard to take this thing out of here. Roots looking nice and healthy. This new leaf up here, it's a pretty good size. I don't know if this new leaf is gonna be as big, but one would hope. Last one on this shelf is my cutie little Hoy Matilde. So I actually had it on my to-do list today to repot this one and get it on a larger trellis, but I have so much new growth coming in that I was like, you know what, I think I should wait until it's hardened off because with how clumsy I am in general and especially now while I'm pregnant, I am just like ultra clumsy. I know it's gonna be a disaster. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. But if you guys don't remember in my Hoya collection video, I said that my plan was to get this on a larger circle trellis so that it wasn't so small. So it wasn't so small. But I was like, oh, I need to go find one because I used to have a circle trellis, but I thought I gave it to my mom, but I found it. It's in my house. And I and then I remembered, she was like, oh, you should keep the trellis because it's a nice trellis. And I was like, okay, maybe you're right. So thank you, mom. And so I do have a circle trellis that I can use, which I actually really like. It's very sturdy. It's made of metal. It's made of something. It's not plastic. Um, so it's very heavy duty and yeah, I'll be able to re-trellis this in the future. And I'm actually quite excited about it. I am nervous about the transition. I'm contemplating whether I wanna move to soil for this one, even though it's been growing so well in pond. But my Hoya New Guinea Ghost was growing well in pond. My um, Adulato was growing well in pond. Callistophila was growing well in pond for like over a year. And then it just, they just suddenly tanked. So I'm still really like on edge. I'm like, is there like an expiration date where the Hoyas reach and they're like, okay, I hate this substrate. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but safe to say I am still very, very like, I don't know. I'm just not feeling very good about Hoyas in Pawn right now, especially with everything that I'm reading from you guys. Thank you to the people who have left recommendations of YouTubers to watch who have avoided or who have recommended staying away from Hoyas and Pawn. I have watched them, so doing my research right now and hopefully in a few weeks I can decide what I want to do. I totally forgot to show you guys this, but if you watched my Glorious Repot video, you'll know that I tested out a Russo pole and tower for the first time and I am freaking obsessed with it. I ended up replacing my Glorious with the Escaletto because we were running into it this way. Sorry, I'm so out of breath. And so I wanted something that didn't have such a like a wide wingspan and I thought my Escaletto would be perfect on it. And then I ended up installing the second tower above it and I finally, finally have a spot for my Tordum which has been outgrowing every place I've put it and I love it up there. Like, I love it, love it. Also, this was one of the cas- not, I'm not gonna say casualty, but um, Vince forgot to water this plant while I was away and so, yeah, it's kind of like yellowed a bunch since I was, um, since I was gone and when I got home, it was like bone dry, but she'll be fine. This one is such like a resilient plant. I'm not worried about it. But yeah, if you wanted to try a Russo pole, I do have a code. You don't have to use it. No pressure, but if you use the code, you do get 15% off. And um, I can't recommend it enough. I'm obsessed with it. I'm gonna move the table, and um, I think I'm just gonna show you highlights, and then I'm gonna quickly water. I'd say that I have more low light 
on this specific shelf than highlights, but I'm gonna start with the first one. So my Ripsalis Paradoxa, I've been having just so many issues with my Paradoxas this winter. Um, they've all been in rehab mode. My main Paradoxa, that was just so beautiful. I went on a whole video about how proud I was of how far it came and then literally shortly after it just completely tanked. So this is my backup Ripsalis Paradoxa. Not as cute. I got this in California last Christmas or something and it's only now starting to push out some growth down at the bottom. It's gonna look a little silly and crazy, but you know, that's what she looks like. I'll take some growth over no growth, so that's good. And then another highlight I would say, I did have like a weird fungally thing that happened with my narrow politiflorum not too long ago, but it pushed out this leaf. This is the last one and just like look at how long and skinny this one is. I don't know how easy it is to pollinate a politiflorum, but I would love to self this one day and hopefully have like a big old batch of seeds of Pali Nero because so many people have asked where I got it and like if I'll ever have cuttings and this stem is like a bajillion miles long. I probably could afford to chop it, but I don't know. It's been growing like so vigorously over the last few months that I'm a little scared to, um, to chop it to be honest with you. And then another exciting thing, uh, I mean, it's exciting, obviously. I have my first in flow. I can't believe she's already at flowering size. I didn't think that it would flower anytime soon, but I have no clue what I would even do with this pollen. And it's so tiny that I don't even know if it's worth harvesting. So anyway, that are, that are, <laughs> that's the two highlights on the shelf. I was gonna consider this a highlight until I found spider mites and I knew something was wrong with it because of how stunted the growth is. Vichii leaves grow so painfully slow, but not this slow. And you can see some of the discoloration on there, some of that texturing. It's almost like it's got a grain and like a reddish tint in certain areas, orangish tint. And yeah, it's spider mite. So I'm actually gonna go throw this in my shower with the rest of my plants that I'm using the concoction on. And hopefully um, we can kill them, kill them dieted, kill them dead. Last, I'm gonna call this a mid light. This is my Anthurium Woohoo's first night. And she's been on the, she did not like. And this is why I'm using the mosquito bits. <laughs> she did not like living on this shelf for a long time and she's still kind of unhappy. Um, honestly, it would probably be happier in an EXO, but I'm like refusing to allow her to live that way. I don't want to spoil it too much. I just want to try and see if we can make it to summer. But she pushed out a new leaf while I was away and it's just, it's all dinged up. It's all banged up. Again, like just kind of like a weird fungally spotty thing that has been going on with my anthurium both out here in my tent. I really don't know what it is. I did grab a bottle of Phyton to um, treat them. So I'm gonna be doing that over the next few weeks and hopefully it works. Oh, and something I was thinking about while I was while I was spraying down my VCI, I don't really ever typically recommend that spray on um, emergent leaves, especially not emergent anthurium leaves. But if you ask me if I would rather get rid of active spider mites or try and salvage an emergent leaf, a new leaf that already has spider mite damage, I'm gonna tell you, I'm just gonna spray it because the leaf is already damaged. It's not gonna look photo worthy or whatever. And so at that point, I would much rather just try and resolve the problem. So this one is still wet. I have, I do have a little bit of a reserve down here, so I'm not gonna need to water this. That is the most annoying thing. On this earth are these stuck leaves. That's a completely bent petiole. At this point, I don't even know if it's able to be saved. 
Okay. Well, I was able to pull it out, but I don't know if the petiole is too far gone. It's like completely, completely bent. So who knows if this new leaf is even going to make it. I'm picking my battles. I'm not stressing about it. This is like the story of what it's been like growing in theoremes out here in the winter. And I'm kind of getting used to the heartbreak. I feel like winters are just gonna be really, really sad out here for my Ethereum, but I'm still not willing to get them back into greenhouses and things like that. It's just, just my preference. I'm not trying to like prove anything or like I'm too good to grow it in a greenhouse. Like honestly, if it was up to me, I would just have a massive like walk-in greenhouse and just shove all my cool plants in there, but that is not my reality. I think I'm gonna spray this one with spider mite spray too. I can't tell if this is dust or if it's spider mites, but I'm not taking a chance. And this one could use some water. Don't judge me, these are so good. I had to buy the family size at Costco when I saw it. They are so good. Nerds really, they really outdid themselves with this one. I'm not gonna lie. If you are into the sour and sweet and you like gummies, this is it's so good. I think the only highlight I wanna show you from this next shelf is my Rio. This is one that I have just been oogling over for the last few weeks and I'm just so impressed at the growth and how big it's become. Some of the new leaves are gorgeous. I was a bit worried because for a while I wasn't getting very like Rio-like leaves. Like they were, I mean like they were okay. They were like this or like this. Um, there was some with even less, it was like, like that. But now I'm getting like really real looking leaves on some of them, especially up here at the top. This one stem is just Gorgina George. I love how much it's growing. I do love some of these new leaves. Like this vine right here is pretty. Not so much that one, but like I love this leaf here. I love this one, but as I do, I chop and that's how I manage to keep things bushy. So as much as it hurts me and it pains me, I'm gonna chop. And I think I'm gonna chop where some of these like not nicer, not, I can't talk, I can't think, I can't talk, can't do anything. I'm gonna chop where some of the not nice leaves are. Um, so right here, can you see? Now I've got this. I'm going to propagate them into single nodes, no, double nodes. I like to sell trailing plants with double nodes. So I'm gonna do the thing where I pluck off one leaf, chop up at the top, and I sell them like this once they're rooted. And I'm just gonna be sticking these in water. That's like the fastest way for me. What is that? Is that a bug? I can't tell what that is, but it, oh, it's an aerial root. Guys, it kind of looks like a little cocoon. It's just an aerial root. Second cutting, this one's so cute. There's a chance, cause this one's gonna have to be repotted soon, I think. Mm, I mean, not really, it's not super root bound, but I was like, I could add more to the pot, but honestly, I have no doubt that this thing is gonna get nice and bushy without me having to add anything. Third cutting. Ow, Archie just kicked the crap out of me. And then the top cutting. Not great variegation on this one, but we'll see what that one looks like. So I'll let these callus for a bit, and then like I said, I'm just gonna shove them in water. So now this is what I am left with. I have a couple stems up here already, so I do think if I just keep chopping, it'll become like much more bushy, much, much, much more bushy. Oh, that was right. I'm contemplating if I wanna chop this one too, but I think it looks fine. We'll see. 
We'll see in a couple weeks, but I'm gonna leave her as, as it is right now. Oh, but I need to water. over water this thing every single time every freaking time I have a new leaf coming on my RA5 swamp but ugh, the new leaves are so stinking ugly I think um, as soon as it's hardened off I'm just gonna chop these off these leaves don't look great I think I'm gonna give this one a spray down too I want to fix this linearis. I do have to repot this like pretty badly. It's in the smallest vessel ever, but I'm not ready yet. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. It's getting like kind of leggy in areas that it dropped. So I want to do the wraparound method, but I uh, don't know where my little, you know, what I'm talking about the little things that things that poke into the soil, the little stick, the, the, the thing. You know what I'm talking about. I don't love using bobby pins because they rust and it gets really gross, but it's the only choice I have right now. I want to wrap around some of the ones that are just really leggy, like up here, well, I'm scared. I'm scared this is gonna just snap. Oh, no. Every time I handle this linearis, something breaks off or falls off or something. Okay, I think that's good. And I'm just gonna take a bobby pin and I'm gonna open it just a little bit to loosen it. That's what she said. And typically I would fill more pond, but it's already like at the very top. So I don't really want to do that, but I'm hoping maybe some of these nodes propagate so that we can get some roots. And when it's time to repot, then I can bury it a bit deeper. I hope all of that made sense. Okay, so there's that stem and then I have this really leggy one. Oh, please don't break. This is so delicate. I don't know how Fern grows her linear so, so beautifully. Like every time I even look at it, I feel like something falls. I'm gonna go around town. Like that. This one is super leggy, but it's so short. And this one's not like crazy leggy, so I think I'll just leave that and then just get these ones tucked in. And you don't wanna like do it too hard because you don't wanna suffocate the stem. You just need it to stay in the pot. It's the only goal. I might actually top up a little bit of pond just to maybe get a better chance at propagating some of the nodes. We lost another one. That looks a bit better. Actually, it looks a lot better. It's not nearly as leggy as it was before, um, but I severely need to repot this. I have some new growth down at the bottom, so I'm gonna wait till that hardens and we're gonna get this into a much bigger vessel, eventually. Moving on to the next shelf. So this is my backup Mikeins. If you guys didn't know, it's getting really, really big now, um, but it's getting long on one stem. So as usual, I'm gonna chop it so that it's a bit more even and then I can activate some new nodes. Uh, drop here. 
I'm not propagating micans. There's just too much of it and nobody buys it and they're all over the stores. At this point, it has become a weed in my city. Do I wanna chop this one too? So happy to see growth up at the top. Finally, it's hard to see with the background, huh? Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna chop this one down a hair. Wait, I think that's the one I just chopped. Wait, does it look fine? I can't see. It's, easy. it's way easier for me to chop it like that. Ooh, you got a big old empty, empty one here. Yeah, I would consider that one a highlight. Um, I'm not gonna highlight this one because I literally just talked about this one. And I do need to repot it. I'm gonna combine it with my other one eventually. This one has to be watered like every three days because the pond just dries out so fast. And it's in a pot with drainage, so it's like even worse. But I feel like this plant has gotten so used to just being dry that it, I don't know, just does fine. So, and then my Mag Chris Lux, just forever looking so pale. Pale, pale, pale. Looking for spider mites and not seeing any. But you never know. Got a couple hours until sunset and I wanted to do everything out here, but I don't think that is going to happen. Uh, maybe, okay, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I didn't even notice that I have a new leaf coming on one of my hybrids. This is my Crystal Mag Dark Forgetty Eye, my favorite one that came out of that batch. It's like trying to be a Hoff Red Sinus and it's just so cute. This leaf is going out, but since I have a new leaf coming in, um, I'm gonna leave it. This one just flowered, and I used the pollen on my indo Papi hybrid again, and hopefully it takes. It's looking okay so far. There's just a lot of pollen on it. Also, look at these roots. Delicious. They're so yummy. I feel like I just repotted this not too long ago and it's already kind of ready for another repot or I am excited. I'm excited. Um, in my glorious video, I briefly talked about these pot extenders. I wasn't actually able to use it though because the pot that I wanted to use it for um, the pot was too small, but this one is definitely not too small. You need at least a six inch pot to use these. So it just looks like this and I will link these. Oh, you can see it in front of my shirt. Um, I'll link these in the description. You can also use my code on these as well to get 15% off if you'd like. So you're supposed to bend these, these little tabs. There are instructions for them. I'm just too lazy to go get it. So you do, you bend these downward like this. Crap, I gotta get up and get the other piece for it. And you face these into the soil, the bent parts. And then it's hard because the stem isn't super long and the petty, the leaves are sitting like right on the pot. But I'm gonna force this to work because I really wanna use it. Even if I snap a leaf off, I'm just kidding. Okay. And then you use the little enclosure to just, you literally just like stick the tab in. Sorry, you can't see it. You just close, <laughs> here now you can see it. You just close it in this tab, do you see? DC, DC, and you insert, um, let's go this way. And it looks like that. And then once it's in there, you can adjust the petioles to fit in all these little, in all these little grooves 
he did like some crazy mathematical equation to calculate like where to put them and stuff. It's kind of crazy, but like it almost works with basically any <laughs> configuration of Ethereum leaves. So, and it's kind of cool because now it like holds all three in place, whereas this one would kind of be back here. I am going to chop the leaf off, but if it was still a good leaf, like you could kind of style it too. So, okay, let me go grab the other part of this thing. They come with these little steak things. And um, I think I'm only gonna use two instead of three. I don't know if you can see it, but where I bent those little tabs, I'm just gonna stick them into the hole that is already there. And it just like holds it in place. And you can also stack these. So they have little tabs here where you can add another one and you can stack it like however high you want. But now I've got an extension of my pot and I'm just gonna fill with more soil. I could technically go higher, but again, these petioles are sitting really, really low. So probably once these aerial roots grow into where I'm adding more soil, I think I'll just repot it into a larger pot. And I did bring home some nine inch pots from California, which is very exciting. I got it from Floriculture. I've never actually seen a store carry a clear orchid pot larger than eight inches. So I had to grab a few. They are a bit pricey. I think it was like $8.99 each. So I only grabbed like three, but to me it was worth it. I just love when people in the community make actually useful things. I did do a gimmicky plant supply, plant things video, but there were so many things I wanted to call out, but I didn't want to put any small businesses on blast and stuff, or I don't know, I just didn't want drama in that video. But there were so many other things I could have included that are just so like useless and some of them are just plain ugly, but then you have a product like this where it's just so thoughtful and like well-constructed, well-made and just useful. Like you can actually use it, it's amazing. Okay, so I've got all of those aerial roots covered up now and I am feeling good about it. Well, that was fun. Um, everyone look at my sister's quadrangularis. She was completely harassed over last summer, fall, and winter because I was propagating like crazy. I sold a lot, I gave away a lot, um, I traded, and it's just finally growing back everywhere. So I'm not gonna be chopping this again for a while. I want it to get really, really big and delicious. I'm just gonna give her a break. She's been working really hard for me over the last few months, so I'm very grateful, but it is time to leave her alone now. Here's something super random that nobody asked for, but I was cleaning out one of my vessels that my string of nickels, I think that's what it's called, my string of nickels is in, and it's got algae that like won't come out. I've already like shook it a bunch of times. So what you can do is stick rocks. Pond works best in my opinion it's like the perfect size and you basically just shake it um it'd be nice if i had something to cover it and you just shake it around vigorously like make sure your brain rattles and it literally takes off all of the algae around the pot. So I've got some like on this side right here. I don't know if you could see it, but there's some on the sides of the vessel that I want to take off. 
that one's a little bit more stubborn but i really just wanted to get the one at the bottom because it was like green and gross don't take screenshots of this anyway that's my tip that's my tip and trick for the day this Eva Sherry eye again. The first time, and I only noticed it when I edited the video, I was like, why did I leave this long, gangly guy? And it bothered me so much. I was itching for a day. So I'm gonna cut it now. I actually think I'm gonna cut it all the way back. Sorry. I never put things in the frame. You guys are just like watching me do nothing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cut it all the way back. And I'm going to chop this again. And then I'll leave it like this. Propagate these two. After I chopped it the first time, this guy woke up, but it's bothering me. It's just a stick of nothing. I don't know if I should leave it. And then there's this stick of nothing too. We don't like sticks of nothings here. I think I'll just chop again. It's like a race to wipe it down before the sap gets on you. I wish there was a thing, um, you know, like that powder that you can put on your dog's nails if you cut it too short and it bleeds uh it's like yeah this powder that stops the bleeding i wish they had something like that for hoyas to stop the bleeding because sometimes they bleed forever even with the tiniest little stem i'm like can you stop it's a little much dude uh this shelf at the bottom are mostly hoyas and like just random plants nothing of note really to show so I'm just gonna walk over there and water really quick off camera. I'm too lazy to set up the shot for five seconds of footage. Sorry, I've already been filming for like three hours, I think. No real highlights to show you on this shelf. I've been waiting to see some new roots on this Ripsalis that I got from California. It says it's a Ripsalis sulcata, I think. It looks like a bassifera, but it's like much thicker and it's super glossy. It's kind of like, it looks like that fire stick plant, kind of, you know what I'm talking about? And I actually really like that plant, but it's apparently super toxic to dogs and even for humans, if like the sap gets on your skin or you ingest it, like it's, it could be deadly, so. Not worth it to me. My sad, sad, sad forgetty eye. That's just forever sad. I've been collecting pollen like crazy for this thing. And it's just, yeah, it's going through it. So I'm just gonna chop this leaf off. And I'm gonna go put this in my tent. Diablo Wentz was one of the plants that dried out a little bit too much while I was gone and i'm seeing some yellowing now so that kind of sucks oh this one actually has a new leaf on the way and it's struggling to get out of there this one's actually been quite um easy for me but you know sometimes you've got like that pesky leaf that just like doesn't want to come out of its catafil Okay, I think I loosened it enough. I'm not going to touch it anymore. This was one of the exciting ones while I was away, but also dried out very fast and started to yellow. But look at how big this Chia Pesence crossed with the Vera Pesence is getting. It's actually such a nice plant. It reminds me of the Longicimilobum a bit. The leaf is getting thicker, um, but it's just too bad that it dried out. Is that a freaking fungus gnat? crawling all over my tripod like a little rat. It's disgusting. Yeah, look how cute the lobes are. And this long leaf. It's beautiful. I am gonna need to repot this because it's coming out the bottom. So that'll be probably in my next repot and chat. My guitar folium, I believe, has root rot. Actually, I know it has root rot because these roots look 
disgusting these um, leaves are so shriveled and nasty so um, I'm gonna be repotting this one not today but eventually my bassifera is growing in quite nicely these days I'm so happy it's trailing now. I feel like it took forever to get there. Lots of new growth up at the top. Happy with this one. It's actually still wet from the last watering, so I'm gonna leave that. My manji is also getting kind of big. I kind of wish it would activate some more growth up at the top because it's like growing this way and that way. like. I'd love to see some action over here. I mean, I guess I could try and style it so that, actually, this one is bent. Oh, look at that. Oh, maybe I did that on purpose, actually, to, I must have. I have one more bobby pin here. Okay, that works. Yeah, I've had like a significant amount of growth on this mandula as well. Um, this is one that I do want to repot somewhat soon. I could probably top it up with some pond in here because I've got some nodes that are exposed that could potentially root. I actually have never checked this one for pests before. I can see some brown spots, but I don't know if that's just from it being really variegated or what because i'm not seeing any thripses i'm not seeing any spider mites which obviously is a great thing but then i'm just like wondering what this coppery color is it's really really pretty and i'm not fertilizing this week because i fertilized really heavily when i got back from my trip so I didn't want to overdo it, so I just decided to skip this week, even though I usually fertilize every week. I swear this thing just like wants to live in the dark or something. Look at how bleached it got under a 10 watt bar. So weak sauce. And then this one that like wasn't under the light at all is totally fine. Your growth pattern is giving me the ick. Why can't you go like that? Look how cute, oh my gosh. Look at how much more bleached this one is. Okay, um, I'm gonna try and make them friends. So I need to go get some Hugo's tape. Stay. See how much better you guys look kind of? But now I'm kind of thinking maybe I put it on the top shelf. So <laughs> top shelf somewhere. <laughs> So it's getting less light. I'm just gonna use a Velcro tie because can't go wrong with Velcro. I love Hugo's tape, but it's like the reused ones if it's not brand new. Like even if you wash it really well, sometimes they don't re-stick. So that kind of sucks because they, I mean they advertise it as being like reusable over and over again, but that's not super true. Okay. I'm just gonna force them to come together and yes I force my petiole sometimes um, but yeah this one I think I am gonna move up here and maybe move one of those that can go fit that can fit down here out <laughs> or I'll just have to squeeze it in somewhere all right moving on to the next shelf this is a definite definite highlight one of my favorite and theory in my collection my red crystal port the new leaf that I showed, I don't remember when I would have showed it, but the new leaf is so much bigger. I don't want to like give you, what is it? Distorted perspective or something like that. Cause it looks so much bigger when I go like this and I'm all the way back here, but this is how big it is in comparison to my head. I'm gonna try and get as close as possible. So pretty good size and it's still, no, it's actually pretty much all the way hardened and it, it is pushing an inflow. So I am planning to cross this with hopefully a king of spades. If it becomes receptive, it does. if it doesn't become receptive, then I will just collect the pollen. 
but that would be really exciting if I could do Red Crystal Port KOS. I want to chop off some of these ugly leaves, but I almost feel like I shouldn't just because inflow's coming out. This new leaf just came out, but I really want to chop this old one off that's like yellowy. That's like yellowy, and then this half. This half leaf. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Bye bye. Oh gosh. This inflow is coming out of. This inflow is coming out of this leaf here, so I'm gonna leave it. Good thing I caught that. Not that that would like automatically kill it, but I really just don't wanna take any chances. And I think I can, oh, you know what? I wanted to do a pot extender on this one, but the pot isn't big enough. It's a five inch diameter, I think. And I, I do believe I tried using it on this size before and it didn't work. Poopy. The politiflorum that I inherited, I think is starting to feel the stress of being outside of the tent that it was in and also this new catafil is getting really big so i think it's a combination of a new leaf coming out much different environment than it had before because the newest leaf and the older leaves are getting a bit yellow i want to peel all this sheet back i'm just scared it's gonna look like a bunch of stacked peni because that's what Alice's looked like. But I'm gonna do it because it's like corn that needs to be shucked. This one is high on my repot list because it's still in moss and it's drying out so fast. It does a look it looks a little penisy. It does. <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? It's so satisfying though, I just can't not do it. It's like an impulse, you know? Feast your eyes on that. A bunch of stacked penis heads. Desperately needs a repot. I, uh, I want to do a repot and chat soon. I don't really want to do another like am I the a-hole series because I feel like I just did one and I don't know. I'm not that I'm over it, but I just don't feel like I'm in the mood for it. Like I kind of want like another topic. I don't really want to do a Q&A style repot and chat. Like it'd be nice to just like talk about one thing or something. So if you have any ideas, please shoot them my way because I have a lot of repotting to do and uh, I need something to talk about. Here's a plant that is doing well and a plant that is not doing well. My tofu getty eye, something. Something, is def like this one has to have something. Spider mite has to. It has to. What? I'm like wanting to see it because look at like how stunted the growth is. This is the newest leaf on it. It's tiny, it's cute. Look at that little sinus, but it's just tiny. It's teeny tiny. Um, I think I'm gonna chop off these yellowy leaves already because they're just not, they're not giving. And it's not even root. Oh, you know what? Oh, the bottom, the bottom roots don't look great. I kind of want to get this in soil. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you guys. I think I might transition this one to soil in the next um, repot and chat. Should I chop this leaf off? Okay, what I think it is is just bad roots. Stem is getting long anyway. If the roots aren't great, I'm probably gonna chop it because I would love to propagate this plant because it's just so freaking cute. So yeah, I'm gonna add this one to my repot list. One that is doing pretty well is my Vag Lux from North Shore Tropicals. This new leaf was coming out while I was leaving and it didn't look that big, the emergent leaf, but there's a pretty, 
decent size jump from this one to this. And I already have a new leaf coming. I just hope it doesn't get stuck. And also I am seeing that we are finally in Cataphil. Look, this is the last leaf that is coming out of a petiole or sheath. Uh, right there, it's coming out of this petiole right here. And then you can see right here, we have Cataphil. Yay, that's exciting. I would say it's exciting because like you want a plant to reach Cataphil size if one, you want to breed it because the closer you are to Cataphil, the closer you are to it flowering. And then of course, you know, once it reaches Cataphil, you will notice much larger leaf size growth from there. So that is good. Finally, I have one Lux hybrid that actually likes me. And it's probably because this one is such like a complex hybrid. It's a Crystal Mag Forgetty Eye Lux. So, you know, the more like you mush in there, I just feel like it has so much vigor. So yeah, I this one might be one that I just have to keep babying because I feel like I'm not really good at growing Lux hybrids. For some reason my forever single leaf one linger eye is finally pushing out some growth i was like i think this thing is a dud <laughs> it hates me and my ripsalis paradoxa minor this is one of them that was dropping like flies during the winter it was so unhappy it still is kind of dropping here and there but there's so much new growth that i'm not as worried about it as i was before um, so I had it in my plant room for a long time. Uh, I just thought maybe the extra light, extra warmth would do it some good. And it looks like it has. The soil still looks a bit wet, so I'm not going to be watering this. But happy to see it's still looking quite bushy um, with so much new growth on the way. That is a great sign. Last one on that shelf is my King of Spades. Can't remember when I showed this last, but had a pretty significant size jump from one leaf to another which is great considering this plant gives me one leaf a year it seems but you know we take what we can get almost done one more shelf until we're at the top shelf but i don't know if i'm gonna be i mean i guess i could show you highlights it's just so much work to go up there okay so this one is my um allegedly an aos mag I can kind of see it the new leaf got completely battered um i used to have this sitting like in the shelf and it fit and then when this new leaf came out it just like hit the top and i was like whoopsies it's a little scuffed up but um you know she'll live i don't see any spider mites on this one but I can see some speckling on some of the older leaves. I don't know if that's like old spider mite damage, but I think just in case I'm going to put this in the bathtub and give her a little wash down because I trust no one. But yeah, pretty good size jump. It's a really nice color leaf. I think it's, I don't know if it's gonna stay that dark, but it would be nice if it did. Hello, baby girl. But I want to see some nail polishes. You want to see some nail polishes? I already showed you all my nail polishes, silly goose. <laughs> Auntie E is watering some plants right now. But 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 stinky butt, but but. But I want you to work and make money for us. You want me to work and make money for you? On your face. Oh, you want? <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot happening right now. Okay, what animal do you want? Uh, a cat. A cat. Okay, cat coming right up. Okay. Oh, that was abrupt. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Millie is the sweetest, but her um, hang-up etiquette needs a little work. <laughs> She'll be like, "I'm gonna let you go." Beep. Doesn't even let me say bye or anything um anyway 
I needed to finish because it's getting dark now, but I, I just, yeah. I felt bad yesterday because she FaceTimed me, like not at the best time. I was like in the middle of a meeting and I was sending out emails and like, I kind of like rushed her to get off the phone, like get off FaceTime. And then immediately after I was done with my meeting, I just had thoughts of like, one day, you know, she's gonna be too old and she's not gonna wanna FaceTime me and she's not gonna wanna call me and like all the things that I do, like, if you don't have an iPhone when you're FaceTiming, you can put like emojis over your face and it like talks and stuff. And she just thinks it is the funniest thing in the whole world. And she'll just go down the list of emojis she wants me to be. And I was like, one day it's not gonna be like this. And she's not gonna be just like giggling on the other, you know, end. And I just got all sad and I felt so guilty for wanting to get off FaceTime so fast. So now I'm like, I don't even care what I'm doing. I'm gonna make time for her. <laughs> but she's just so funny when she hangs up. Like the, when she hung up now, she was like, I'm gonna hang up and then just hung up. <laughs> I was like, okay, bye. Anyway, um, here's my indo Pappy hybrid that I uh, used for my indo Pappy hybrid dark-ish for Getty Eye that I showed in my plant propagation video a couple days ago um, and she is a mother yet again she pushed out another inflow shortly after i harvested the berries on the other one and i pollinated this with my um did i just go cross-eyed right now i pollinated it with my crystal mag dark forgetty the one with the pink sinus that is the pollen parent it's looking okay so far. I did it before I left. And so I think if it was gonna abort, it would have done it by now. And it's still looking really green. It's not super plump and there's so much pollen on it that I'm not, I'm not really sure what is happening to be honest with you. I'm just kind of hoping that it took because I don't know, I think that might be kind of a cool cross, but it's doing so much right now. So pushed out this leaf while I was away, doesn't look great. It's pushing out a second leaf on the second growth point, which when I repot this, I think I will separate it out because it's like essentially two plants in one. But yeah, this one has just been an overachiever. Doesn't look the greatest, but she's been really, really busy this winter making babies. I can see a little bit of like speckling. And so I don't want to assume that just because I don't see spider mites doesn't mean that there's no pests and like this new leaf looks pretty awful. Like it doesn't look like it was just a result of low humidity. It looks like, like it's got spider mites or something. So I think this is one that I'm also gonna take to the shower just to wash down because I don't wanna take any chances. I'm gonna try and get through this top shelf as quickly as possible because I wanna do one more thing out here before the sun goes down. But I did notice a new Doriaki silver leaf has come out. There was actually one that came before this, but it just completely rotted in the sheath or it didn't rot, it just like dried up in the sheath. Luckily not seeing any spots on this guy, thank goodness. Soil still looks a bit wet. I'm not, I don't think this one needs to be watered just yet. This is my other Crystal Mag Dark Forgetty Eye that has a partially fused sinus. Um, what is that? I don't know why I'm on such like high alert right now. Well, cause like, you know, it's not great. It's not a great sign that I've seen a couple plants now with spider mites or like, whatchamacall, spots. I don't know. I just want to spray this one down. It's like, I'm always so, I feel like things on that top shelf get neglected so much that I never really know what's going on up there. I almost want to just like spray all of the plants that are up there, but that's so much work. And I'm gonna have to empty out. You know what, I might just use Vince's shower because my shower is full. But yeah, I'm just gonna take everything down, stick it in Vince's bath and 
give them a spray even if I don't see anything because I'm already here might as well and it's been a couple weeks now since I've actually done like a preventative spider mite treatment so we are overdue I'm heating up some leftovers but um, I had Vince take everything down and I'm just gonna go around and show you the highlights because I'm just gonna shove these all in his bathroom and give them a spray down but um Soderini is still not <laughs> sizing up it's just at the same size it's always been um, McDowell doing better than ever too good actually so many leaves on it and the stems are like way out of the pot already like this needed a repot ages ago um, but we've got some nice leaves on it it is slowly sizing up not very fast but like i mentioned before i don't really mind if this one stays smaller and we've got another mcdowell here this is the one that i inherited recently from aaron this is the new leaf on it and it's quite large actually she's big she's a big girl um we have my novelty ace here which pushed out this leaf sorry <laughs> pushed out this leaf while I was away, um, kind of got squished on other plants, but not the end of the world. I have a new Gloriosum uh, silver or Gloriosum white veins leaf. This is the first leaf that has come out since the repot. Honestly, I was getting a little bit worried that it was hating it. Um, and I think it did for a little bit. It just needed some time to recover. And this is a really great size. So, um, yeah, that's about it for all the plants up there, really. I have like my billy and stuff, but I'm just going to water these um, and then get them into the tub. I haven't put the plants in the shower yet because it's getting dark out here. So I want to do this last thing first since I'm not filming the other part. You're probably wondering what we are up to. So hopefully you can see. I say that every time. Hopefully you can see. Hopefully you can see. I moved you down just a bit. I think that's better. So while I was in California, my mom had this genius idea. She had a planter very similar to this. We went to Floriculture, that um, shop that I linked in the description. She bought I think two mini orchids and she bought like two air plants or something like that. I'll see if she can take a photo of it and send it and I can insert it here, whatever. And she had this idea of putting it right in front of her sink because that's like the splash zone. There's always water like flying in that direction. So she's like, that would be perfect for something that doesn't mind having a good amount of water. Um, I think the air plant was a great idea. I can't speak to how well the orchids will do because I know nothing about orchids, but it got me thinking that I kind of want to put something in front of my sink too. It's kind of like a dead area. We never use it. We do have bar stools there, but it's such a small, area that we don't we don't ever use it like we never sit up there to eat nothing um so i figure why not do a little arrangement i think ideally i would have loved to like go shopping and find some cute succulents and whatever but i was like let's just use what i have here i can always redo it if i decide like if i get tired of it or something so i have decided to put some of my random plants that i feel like are not doing much for this shelf. So I have this guy that has like quadrupled in size since I got it. I got this as like a little pup from my neighbor. So I have that, I have this Zenzi, Zenzi plant um, that I picked up a couple months ago. Um, I have this random little thing that I almost threw away. I think I'm just gonna shove it in there and see what happens. And then I have this fake air plant. So kind of like a weird little mix. It wouldn't be my go-to, but I just kind of want to put together an arrangement and maybe in a couple months, um, I'll revisit the plants that are in here. But for now, I am just going to unpot everything and get it into here. These little like 
potatoes that they grow out of are just so goofy looking. They look kind of creepy. They look like a big old egg or like a schmesticle. If you know, <laughs> if you catch my drift. I do need to wipe these leaves down though because they are dusty. I have been filming all day. It normally would not take me this long. Well, sometimes it does. Sometimes it takes me a really long time because I'll go in and I'll like wipe down every single leaf, but you know, it's not, it doesn't feel stressful because I don't really have anything else to do that day. I'm just sitting down watching TV. I'm not rushing. I don't care if the sun goes down, but it just ups the ante a little bit when I'm filming, which is why even if like a video like this performs really well, if it became a regular thing that I did like multiple times a month, I just don't think I could sacrifice, like it's not worth the trade-off of like my zen time. <laughs> so if I can give any advice to people out there that have just started a channel or are wanting to start a channel with plants, I think um, the one piece of advice I can give you is to make sure you set your boundaries and set like your intentions for your social media and then set your intentions for your relationship with your plants because I think that it can go bad really fast if you allow it to become too much of just for socials, just for content and stuff. It just doesn't feel as good, you know what I mean? Um, speaking of new channels, I'm gonna give Natasha a quick shout out. She is the sweetest ever. Um, she's been following me for a while now. She has purchased, I'm pretty sure she's purchased a few of my plants now, but she started her own YouTube channel. So if you are looking for a new plant YouTuber to watch, I'm gonna link her channel in the description. Please go give her a follow. She's just, yeah, she just radiates like good energy and it's been nice to have. It's been nice to have, why does that sound? It's been nice to have someone else to watch. Am I okay? It's been nice to have. Yeah, I can't, I can't process that sentence right now. Okay, so I have separated out the two. I'm just gonna put them sort of like next to each other instead of them clustered like this so that it kind of fills in the space a bit more. And then last is this little weirdo dude that probably doesn't even have roots. Oh, it has roots now. This thing was rootless for so, so long. Oh, it's squishy though. Oh no. Is it supposed to be squishy? I guess I've never like, I've never felt it before, but it's squishy. I don't know if that means it's rotted. Or I, I feel like it's supposed to be firm, but I mean, it's looked like this for so long. So I don't know. I do want to do some Leka down at the bottom here. I need to like hone in my inner Benji. I mean, I will never be able to arrange things like Benji does, but I need to like, that's something that I wanted to buy are like toppers like cute toppers for my plants because everything is just exposed. Like I'd like to do a topper for my yucca. I'd like to do a topper for, what other plant was it that I wanted to do a topper for? Oh, like this plant, like ones that you can actually, I forgot where my camera was, ones that you can actually see. I mean, he does a lot of live moss, but I just, I can't. I, he, I, I don't know how he keeps it alive. I don't know if he's like spraying things every day or what, but that absolutely would not happen at my house. So I need something more realistic, like lightweight, like stones, like lightweight pebbles and stuff like that. Something that doesn't require maintenance and something that's not alive. So I think I just need to get like cute pebbles, cute sand and stuff like that. Cause then this is one that I think I'd really like to have a topper, but maybe I won't do it just yet in case I change things up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna arrange it facing me because I think if I do it the other way, it's gonna look weird. I'm not gonna be able to focus. Sometimes I wish I had a second shooter with me. Um, maybe this one can spill out a little bit like that. 
And then I don't know if I should do one like on the other side or if I should do it next to each other. Like, would that be weird? Well, it's not that weird actually. If I do one on this side, okay. And then where's my little squisher? I think I'll do this one last and I'll just like plop it sort of in the center somewhere. Okay, let's just do that for now. So I'm gonna fill toward you. Hopefully it doesn't look weird. And the soil that I'm using is um, like a peat-based soil. So it does dry out quite fast, which would be good because where it's gonna be, it is getting light. It's just not gonna be getting like a ton of light. But I do have like my big window in the kitchen, you know what I mean? But like over the remainder of this season, it's not gonna be getting a ton of direct light. It should be fine in the winter, in the winter, in the summer though. forgot I still have to do this one this feels so strange I wish you guys could feel the texture of this it's like a gummy bear it's exactly what it feels like a gummy bear I'm gonna bury this one deeper because it's so weird it's like it looks like a turnip or something like I thought it would grow more balls and there's no balls it's just getting taller <laughs> Yeah, this would look way better if it had like some kind of like sand or gravel at the top. Just make it look more finished, but I could also do pumice. I mean, I could do pumice because then at least I could just mix that back into the soil if I change my mind. Maybe I'll go grab my pumice. Where do I stick this one? It's such a bright color. I don't even know if it really matches the vibe. Like, is it too bright, you know? If I just stick it right, like, right here or something. No, that's not bad. That is not bad. Okay, let me go grab my pumice. I feel like I hear people saying it either way, pumice or pumice. Pumice? I've always said pumice, but I don't know, I just make these things up. So this is the color of it. And it is going to get a bit darker once it's sprayed, which I will show you. Oh my gosh. It's dusty. Kind of gives it more of like a desert look. If that makes sense. Let's take you closer. You can't see nothing. I feel like it's not looking that bad for something that I've sort of just improvised with things around the house that I already had. But this like whole thing reminds me of how much I used to love making succulent terrariums. That was so much fun. You could just be so creative. Like I used to be able to make like so many in one day. <laughs> I would go crazy. It's like all I would do and I'm like, oh crap, I didn't get any work done today. <sighs> I just find that like succulents are a little hard in terms of maintaining, like they grow so wild, you know? And um, you kind of have to know how to like prune it back and I don't know. I wish that they would grow just a little tiny bit slower. I'm just gonna remove this and just top it because it's getting difficult to get in the little crevices. Okay. That 
is what she looks like right now. And I'm gonna show you the color it changes to once it's wet. Although I really like this color. It's giving very like Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree vibes. So now it kind of just looks a little bit more like earthy. I liked it either way, but I actually think I prefer this more. So this is done and now I'm gonna go place it and see how she looks. This is one of my favorite mushrooms that I got from Amanda. And I think I'm gonna put it maybe here. Like that. Oh, that's too cute. Okay, mom, this is too stinking cute. Such a good idea. I do think now that I'm looking at it here and I'm really liking it, I think, yeah, I'm gonna probably in the next few weeks go to the store and probably redo this whole thing, but this is a good kind of first start. I definitely want to keep the ones that are already in here. Like I like the idea of keeping these guys in here with the Zen Z. Um, but I think maybe I'll get some more like cacti, like slow growing ones. And hopefully they have enough light here, but oh gosh, I'm loving this. I love it so much. Sorry, I keep moving around. I'm trying to get like the best lighting. But um, yeah, anyway, look at my counter. We have some new additions. <laughs> The days of having clear countertops are gone. Um, I've got my bottle warmer here, or bottle warmer, bottle of sterilizer. And I just did this yesterday. I found this super cute shelf at um, HomeSense and I wanted a way to kind of incorporate my coffee and tea area um, with my air fryer. And I just feel like it worked out really well. So before, um, we head into the plant room. I am gonna get all of these guys into the shower. I am so shiny and sweaty um, I'm gonna get those into the shower and I am going to clean up and I will probably insert a little time-lapse for you guys And then we will head into the plant room
We are in the home stretch, people. I am tired. But um, I have a few more things that I have to do. I'm so excited to take a shower tonight and just go lay down in bed and read my book. So here is uh, the latest update in the Billy Yetier saga. So if you guys didn't know, just a little backstory. I got a cutting from my friend Amanda last year. The bottom leaf was a half moon and the top leaf was reverted. So I knew I had maybe a 50-50 chance at best. So this is the top cutting. This was the first leaf that came out in my care. <laughs> had the tiniest, tiniest bit of variegation. And then the next leaf that came after it was completely green. I think I remember seeing the tiniest little spot Maybe I was, I was dreaming it, but newest leaf that came out is completely green. I have another leaf on the way. I don't know if it's gonna be variegated. The bottom node started as this little leaf down here. It was fully green. And then came uh, this one that had the tiniest, again, bit of variegation. Um, you can see little splooches. Hello? Focus, focus. You can see little splooches up here, down here. This was the next leaf, completely green, all green. I could have sworn I had one. Oh, there, this is the plant, or this was the one I was talking about. It has the tiniest bit of variegation, just right there, right there, a little line, that was it. But this leaf just opened today and it has so much more variegation. This whole corner here is variegated, which is really exciting. So it can be completely random. I'm gonna throw in a picture of Lauren's Billy Etier. She got this one as a cutting too. This one was kind of a gamble for her. <laughs> My hair is giving pilgrim again. Hers, like, I think if I can remember correctly, it completely reverted slash it was like mostly green and then randomly one day the variegation just came back without her chopping without her doing anything it just came back and now it's like this beautiful specimen so i'm not giving up hope i am just keeping my fingers and toes crossed that the variegation comes back on the top and we can continue more variegation on the bottom because i would be so happy to have a variegated billy if one of these variegates more i'm gonna try to give a cutting back to amanda because all of her cuttings now including her mother plant is green <laughs> okay um i have written down the things i needed to do today oh gosh poles moss poles i don't want to do that i don't want to do that i really don't i have to extend poles do i have to i hate doing pole extensions, you guys. And I don't even know if I have the right size. I don't think I have any more of the size that I need, which is medium, because I see a large pole, a large pole, small. Okay, I'm gonna need to table that. Oh wait, I see one, I think. Unfortunately, I found one. <laughs> that means I have to do it. So um, I want to extend my elbow pole. Let me show you what it looks like right now. I was thinking if I have enough energy, I would just do some of my rehab repotting today because I'm thinking in my next repot and chat, I don't know if I wanna have re rehabs. I think I just wanna do like plants that need to be repotted and I don't wanna mix in rehabs with it. Oh no. Sorry, I saw that my growth in a prop box is hitting the top. Oh, yeah, the elbow. She's a pretty little thing. Not much of size growth in terms of the leaves, but it's just, it's so beautiful. Um, the variegation, I feel like I got really lucky with it. So it has outgrown this pole now i just need to extend it essentially i just don't know i'm a little nervous because i waited kind of long sorry i waited kind of long and now these you can't see anything because of the glare 
these aerial roots are already so long and I am scared I'm gonna break them when I extend the pole. It's leaning. I feel like I need to, um, okay. I don't know if I need a table or what. I'm gonna take this one step at a time so I don't get overwhelmed. I don't know why pole maintenance, it just, it overwhelms me. It really stresses me out. I don't like doing it. I don't like that this pole is leaning forward a lot. I'm just going to cut this at an angle so that I have, so that I have a sharp pointed edge to stick it in. You gotta do it fast or else the bamboo will break. You want a nice clean cut like that. And I'm just gonna stick this in here. Hopefully I don't break too many loose because I just broke that one. But I just need to stabilize this a little bit more. All right, I have hit Lekka now. That is in and now she is not leaning anymore, which is great. But I need to assemble a new pole. And now I need a table. I think I'm gonna go for a different approach with this pole because I, I like the idea of using um, a soil pole, tree fern fiber pole instead of moss. Um, but I just, the one thing I hate is the fallout in the front. So I'm gonna do moss down at the front. And I think I'm gonna cut these little legs off. I don't really find them that useful, to be honest. They kind of just get in the way. Okay, that's not gonna work. Oh, my back hurts so much. It's already eight o'clock. Okay, so instead of just going straight soil, I'm going to pack in moss at the front. Kind of sucks because this is a little shredded. They're not all long fiber because I kind of mixed in my chopped up moss. But I'm gonna do moss up at the front, not a super thick layer, just enough to essentially cover the holes. empty down at the bottom for where it's gonna connect actually do I need to I don't think I need to actually let's just pack it all the way okay so front is packed and then I'm gonna fill the rest with my tree fern mix Wow, the light is really bright, isn't it? That is much better. I feel like it was way too bright. I don't know if this is gonna be too full because the other pole looks like it's on the smallest, or is it the biggest? So the other pole, unfortunately, is on its last, is on the first clip instead of it being like really big like this. That would have been ideal. But because I'm sticking it into that pole, it has to be the same size. Meaning I have to be able to close it all the way. Which I think I'll be able to, and I think I could do even a little bit more surprisingly. a bit tight but aerial roots on monsters are pretty strong so hopefully it can penetrate that but now at least the fallout isn't as bad you know with like the soil poles because 
when I have to like move the pole around or move the plant around, it's just soil is just falling everywhere and it's a pain. But I don't, I don't like doing just moss poles. I just find them to not be as like nutritious, <laughs> nutritious as something like a soil pole or tree fern fiber pole. I don't get as robust and healthy of roots. Um, when the pole dries out, the roots are like less forgiving when I do kind of remember to water it. So this hybrid pole is probably, hopefully going to be a better bet, but now like the fallout is so much better. Okay, <sighs> so much cleaning to do now. I'm gonna have to vacuum in here anyway. I always get so wrapped up in the mess like I know it's in good habit to like clean as you go so that you don't have this like giant mess after but like it's to the point where like I'm in the middle of washing dishes I haven't even like wiped the counters down yet or whatever water sprays onto the counter I have to like stop what I'm doing and clean it and wipe the water it's like why can't you just relax chill out man I almost feel like I should cut this at an angle too Oh, that was a bad one. Maybe I'll try again. Okay. Another bad one. Freak. Maybe I have to go this way. Just don't want to accidentally cut the elbow. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. Sorry. Alice just informed me that I have been telling you guys the wrong ID for so long for a Hoya. The Hoya Eversherii, that's not how you spell it. That's not how you say it. It's one word and it's Eversherii because there's no two I's. So Roserii, Eversherii. Someone help, someone help a girl out. She's struggling. Okay, let's try and do this without breaking this is a already a disaster people squeeze that in ah, I might lose these aerial roots but it'll root that's what I'm gonna tell myself why are you not going in you're pissing me off hmm hold on hold on My life's so hard. This is why you don't wait so last minute to do your polls because I can't, I can't put it in all the way. That's what she said. My eyes, my eyes twitching. Here. It's so crunchy. Oh. Okay, who am I triggering? I have to be triggering someone. A million bajillion years later. Okay, so all I have to do is zip tie this, I think. I already know I'm gonna get at least like two comments on this video that are like, why don't you just do it like this and sound like that? I hear me. Cause I didn't, okay? Maybe I'm not as smart as you. Maybe I'm not as intelligent as you. And maybe that's why you have more money than me. You can't see anything I'm doing, but you know what? It's fine because it's a hot mess anyway. And this is just a dumpster fire. Oh, I didn't attach it to anything good. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Stay calm, stay cool, stay collected. Okay. Now, just need to position this one so that it's over here. And I am pretty sure I have broken a root, but you know what? for the greater good. And I wanna keep it here. So 
I think I need a Velcro tie. And you know what? That's not what I need right now. Universe. That's not being, that's not helpful. She's leaning again. She's leaning. Okay, zip tie. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm honestly just gonna sweep the floor with dog hairs and my hairs and all, and I'm gonna stick it in my soil bin. Cause we don't waste tree fern fiber around here. No, we don't. No, we don't. You are too long. That is not what she said. Now, how can I keep you from being crooked? This is my small collection of rocks. And I keep, I have it on my to-do list like every day, like, whoa, go outside, collect more rocks. And then I'm like, eh, don't feel like seeing people outside. Put it off for the next day and then I never, and then it just keeps going and going and going. And I just keep putting it off and putting it off and then I never go. I really need some rocks now. I'm not kitten. You know, that could have gone a lot worse. It didn't go great. I'm not gonna say that was like successful or anything, but lesson learned. Once it outgrows this, I I am, well, no, not once. Once it gets, once it, it gets close to outgrowing this pole, I am going to add the extension in before we have aerial roots that are in the way because that would have been so much easier. I'm gonna clean up really quick and then we're just gonna move on to the next thing. And maybe the last thing. When I get my body back, boy, it's on. It is on. I don't even know how I've managed to keep my plants alive during this pregnancy. Between the nausea, the nausea that has persisted until now, I am still on nausea meds, to just being so highly uncomfortable. I don't know. It is a miracle. I'm not really sure how to go about this next thing, to be fully honest with you. It's um, something I've been thinking about for a few days, and I can't quite wrap my mind around how I want to do this. Like, if I want to keep the same setup, mounting this orchid on a piece of cork board and replacing the moss, or if I want to do something different because the roots dry out so fast. You know, I thought with these orchids that are growing outside of a substrate, like I thought they wouldn't like dry up and die like so fast. Like I thought they'd have a little bit more, I don't know, resilience. But either way, we have to get it off of here because it is on its last leg. You guys can see it only has this string oh she's got she's done it there used to be like so much string around here but it has biodegraded away like this is the rope it's a few years old now i think i've had this for two years it's been on this same setup and it's just falling apart at the seams so i need to take it apart i was online looking at like orchid mounting inspo I was looking into all these products to mount your orchids and stuff and I don't know, nothing really resonated with me. Something that did kind of intrigue me a bit were those like, they're like cages um, and you like mount the orchid in there and it like wraps its roots around the cage and you can just like soak the whole cage. But when I was reading about it, like you have to soak it almost every day and I'm like, I wish I could just pot this thing. <laughs> get it into some substrate and um, not have to worry about it but I don't know I uh, do need to trim off quite a bit of roots though that oh we've got I'm actually so intrigued to see what's going on in here because this is the board that it came on oh I had to rip that off like growing into this cork board. This is the board that it came on, so I've never actually seen. Oh crap. 
never actually seen what was under this moss, but I've got more roots. <sighs> I essentially just need to like start over because a lot of the roots that were on here have rotted away. I have some brown, I don't even know what these are called, straps that have died off that I need to also trim away. I just want to get it cleaned up and like refreshed because this poor orchid has looked so pathetic for like a year straight, maybe longer. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm surprised it's even alive. I don't know how I've kept it alive this long considering I have killed pretty much every orchid that has come into this house. But here she is. I'm gonna rip away all of this old moss because it's like, yeah, it's literally like degrading. All right, now I'm gonna just start trimming because like, <sighs> there's a bunch of like wiry roots, old leaves and stuff. I just think it needs to be cleaned up. It's looking a little cray cray and I just wanna see what I'm working with here. I do wish I could just mount, um, pot this so that I don't have to worry about the roots drying up. It's like I say, I want to be an orchid person, but then I'm not willing to do the work. This generation, huh? God, I hope this doesn't fall apart. I think that's what's keeping this all together. Maybe I should stop chopping away. Okay, okay, okay. Because I really don't even know what I'm doing here like in general on this earth. <laughs> Not joking. Oh, see, that's what I didn't want. It's like separating. I could put this in my little terrarium thingy, that thing I just made, but like where? It's kind of weird. Just go in like the little corner or something and like go upward. I could also put this somewhere else. I think I'm gonna keep this separate. We might have to get creative with that one. I don't have a lot of faith in myself, but I'll try. I'm gonna cut this one off. It's kind of sad cause it's like, it's just, it's not looking good. So let's cut that one. And then I'm gonna cut this one too cause it's like yellowing. I do have new growth coming in, so we're just gonna hold on to hope that we can kind of start over again. Kind of sucks that these are all like bent and wonky and gross, but it's fine. Okay, so this is what I'm working with in terms of the roots and the entire plant. Honestly, it could fit back on this board. I'm just not sure I love it because it's just like a square. I do have more interesting pieces of cork board and I actually have one in my XO that would work really well for it in terms of it gripping onto things. So I might dismantle it because I'm not really liking it in my XO anyway. I actually started hating it the second that I put it up, but I was too lazy to fix it. Yeah, I'm not doing any repotting today. I am cutting this video as soon as this is done. I'm tired, I'm tired and I'm over it. So this is the piece that I was talking about. Like, I feel like it would just fit so perfectly on here and like be able to just like grab onto whatever. It's just, how do I keep it? How do I keep it moisturized? How do I moisturize you? But then how would I hang this thing? I don't even know which orientation I would go. Like that, I'm gonna get a splinter. I could go like that. No, I feel like this 
way makes the most sense because it kind of just sits on there perfectly. But I do have to wrap moss around it. I just don't know if I have any long fiber. Oh, frick, I do. I have a whole bag. I have a whole bale. I feel like this is honestly going to be hard to mount. Like, where am I going to hang it? This is something I have to think about. I feel like in theory it's nice, but I don't know where I'd even put this. Because it would have to like sit on something. Oh. Well, it could sit like that. And then I could put it in the corner. And if it sat on a shelf or something, like this. I think that could work. I just need to wrap some moss around it now and see if it works. I'm going to use this fishing wire instead of like a um, burlap string or something just because, I don't know. I've never had a thing of fishing wire before. What do I do? Cut this? Sure. Is this for something or is this to hang it at the store? Look at me trying to be fancy. It's freaking fishing, fishing line, okay? I'm gonna tuck in what I can. And all of the white roots are accustomed to being in moss, so I'll try and keep those tucked in. The green ones, I don't know if they're gonna make it, but we're gonna hope for the best. I made a new batch of moss but i need to pick out all the freaking sticks this one this batch that i bought is so like like dirty not like dirt dirty but you know when it's like there's so many twigs in it one time i got a batch that i swear was like mostly twigs i was like so is there any moss in here or what and it's the worst when you're preparing it and then you go to wring out the water and then you just get impaled by a twig. That's always really fun. I'm just going to start packing as much as I can into these little crevices. I don't want to cover too much of like the natural wood because that's going to take away the, you know, the point of using it because I like the way it looks. I'm going to stuff some back here. I'm probably gonna have to spray this thing pretty often but I just have to be better at it I just wish ugh, I don't know maybe it needs to become like part of my morning schedule like spraying my orchid just remembering to spray it I think that's enough moss I don't want to go overboard with the moss because I already am covering way more of this wood than I want to. So that'll be it for you. And I just need to secure it now with wire. I think what I can do is... Um, go from the back and just do like a s initial tie. Don't roast me, you guys. I'm not, this is like not my thing. I'm just winging it here. Um, I don't 
like how that goes. Okay. And then I guess I just start like wrapping. Oh my gosh. Um, where is my string? Okay. I'm gonna go around that way. And then I wanna get these ones down. think that's good. I don't really feel like it needs more than that. And then where's the end here? And then I can just tie it to where I started up here. I feel like the moss is in there pretty good without needing too much uh, wire. I think this is the finished thing. It'll just sit like that, I guess, on a shelf, like that. I wish that these were down, but I didn't really angle, angle it that way, but maybe they'll figure itself out. But I think I could just sit it like this on my shelf and um, maybe I'll insert a photo of where I ended up putting it on my shelf. Hopefully it doesn't look dumb as heck but i think it's better than what it was on before i don't know what's up with this camera angle i feel like this is really high you guys are low i'm low i don't know what it's fine it's the last shot of the night um but i need to figure out what i'm doing with this one this guy like does this look weird here like, would it look weird? I can't tell. Like, I feel like it doesn't really... It doesn't really vibe, you know? It's kind of like a weird shape. It's a weird... angle. But at the same time... It would be cool to have it here because then, like, water is constantly just spraying on it. No, that is so freaking weird. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I gotta remount it on something else, but what? I don't think I have a smaller piece of cork. I think that might be it. I wonder if I could do it in this thing. Here's what I'm thinking. Might be a stupid idea, but what if I like hung it i could just pot it like that and then i could like hang it somewhere using this hole as a thing for a nail i think it went this way or was it that way So it looks better going down or up. That's the only thing I could think of. I used to have that like egg looking one and I just like never used it for anything and I freaking donated it and this would have been so perfect for it. I think it can go down like that. And then I can fill it with maybe moss, tree fern fiber mix moss and hopefully it stays. I tried it. We can certainly try it. Actually it might be better if I kept this in it and just put a hole. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Yeah, I think it'll hold better in the wall 
if I just poke a hole here and then hang the nail. Like, I don't think I'd need anything longer than like a little nail because it's not gonna be super heavy. So then I could just go like this. Hopefully this works. Oh. I'm gonna do moss first in here. I actually don't know why I want to do moss. Oh, well I guess to keep it from spilling out the back. I don't need that much then. Maybe just enough to cover the hole. Not really just tree fern fiber. Um, I'm thinking of just doing my Ethereum mix. So, Clean this up a little bit. This one actually has pretty good roots on it, so that's good. And I'm just gonna stick the whole thing in there. And then, it's so hard to show you. I'm not changing the angle again. I have done way too much today. I'm I'm done and then I'll do the rest with moss and hopefully it doesn't fall out. I think if I pack it tight enough it should be fine. My little green onion. I could even go upward but I don't know if that's gonna be like the natural way you know. Oh my gosh it's so bright. I don't know if this is gonna be the natural way. I, kind of, I don't know if I like it more going up or going down. I guess I could try up first, but if it starts wanting to grow down, then I can just flip it. It's not a huge deal. But I don't think that's bad. It's not like my worst idea ever. So again, I'll throw in a picture of where I end up putting it. Hopefully it worked out. I'm so tired of seeing my pilgrim hair. Um, hopefully it worked out. I am glad that I ended up separating it and let's hope that they both take well to their new pants. I still need to um, spray down half of the plants that were on my top living room shelf. Haven't done that yet because I need to wait for the other ones to dry. I honestly might just do it tomorrow because I am exhausted. I have done so much today. Um, but overall, I'm feeling really good. I feel like I tickled my creative juices a little bit, got some things that had to get done, like spider mite prevention, spider mite treatment, and then kind of isolating some of my rehabs that need tending to. I gotta get these props in water. Uh, overall, very productive day just feeling good overall. Hopefully you guys were able to get some plant chores done while you watched this. Thank you as always for letting me keep you company too while you do all the plant things. Um, I appreciate you guys for being here. Sorry again that we're not doing a week of this month. I just hope you guys understand it's been a crazy, a crazy month for me. But hopefully this one kind of did the job in terms of a long upload for this month. But yeah, I'm gonna go. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next one.